Good afternoon. I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching online at onespotmedia.com. Following yesterday's declaration of a state of emergency, SOE, in the St. Andrews South Police Division, concerns are again being raised over the use of SOEs as a means of dealing with the country's crime problem. The concern follows numerous calls from various sectors of the society for the Andrew Holness-led government to outline a detailed crime plan. For Central Manchester Member of Parliament and the challenger for PNP President, Peter Bunting, the imposition of a state of emergency is more a publicity stunt. Speaking with reporters in St. James last evening, Mr. Bunting said he's not hopeful that there will be any great results under this SOE. The Central Manchester MP and former Security Minister says the members of the force are being used we ineffectively. We need intelligence so that they can identify who the violence producers are, where the guns are, and go for them in a pincer-like movement. This, you know, state of emergency approach has been just used for largely for public relations. The, the data says that it has not been effective and we need something more meaningful from the government to respond to the crime situation. Meanwhile, the private sector organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, is calling for the authorities to provide details on the decision-making process in declaring states of emergency. PSOJ President Howard Mitchell says the business community supports the states of emergency because crime and violence have affected its members. However, he believes there are other areas in need of heightened security measures. Are there additional activities being pursued in Clarendon, hotspot management, um, additional intelligence and surveillance activities? Because we can't just go on putting band-aids on the part of the cancer that call out the loudest. So I, I support it, but there must be more. Jamaica's airports are in need of essential upgrades. That's according to Transport Minister Robert Montague, who says Jamaica's facilities or airports facilities lack key, faci key technology to compete on the global stage. He was speaking at the 45th anniversary of the Airport Authority of Jamaica. We have more in this report. Both the Norman Manley International and Sangster International airports have been leased to investors within the last 20 years. A move the Airports Authority of Jamaica saw as necessary in developing and modernizing the facilities. However, Transport Minister Robert Montague believes that Jamaica should be leading in innovation, but instead the island is lacking upgrades to facilitate easy travel. Why it is that the airports authority is not challenging the young people? I just met a young man who went to St. George's. Why are you not challenging him and people like him to come up with an app that will make travel easier? Why we don't have more chaos in immigration? Why would we have cameras being designed and paid for by the airports authority that use facial recognition to give me a boarding pass? Why it is I still have to fill out the immigration form? Why it is I still have to walk almost a mile from departure to the gates? Why I don't have a moving passageway? Where are the golf carts in our airports? I went to Turks. I went to the Turks Islands. And they have a drive-through immigration and customs. Drive-through. One to in Jamaica. Mr. Montague argues that the lack of urban planning creates major challenges for the country's infrastructure. He believes Jamaica must look at mass transit and other key transportation issues for the future. The transport minister says Jamaica's inability to plan, especially in the transportation sector, leads to citizens being inconvenienced when improvements are made to infrastructure. The, the, the expansion to the Mandela don't make any sense. In Jamaica, Dr. Bedward, over the years we have developed policies to move motor vehicles, not to move people. Because whenever the roads clog up, we come in and we widen the road, and we straighten the road, and we put in another lane, and we make travel easier. And as you widen the road, more people buy cars. Machine Masters. TVJ News. The problematic sargassum seaweed is once again impacting Jamaica's beaches. However, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett is proposing that this year the issue will be fixed. He spoke on the matter during a tour of tourist attractions in St. Mary on the weekend. Sargassum. 
It's a form of seaweed that, almost yearly, has been a problem to beaches in the region. The weed washes in in droves, covering large areas of beach, both land and water. It's again seen as a threat to the tourism sector, as it has already been seen on beaches in eastern Jamaica this year. We're concerned because we see that as a clear and present danger to tourism, especially the tourism we understand that is driven by sand, sea and sun. Noting the importance of the beach experience to the sector, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says it's a threat to the entire region. In addition to its unsightly nature and hindrance to beachgoers, the seaweed also has a distinctly pungent odor which adds to visitors staying away. Last year, the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, suggested collecting the seaweed for use as fertilizer. While there has not been much detail on that suggestion, Mr. Bartlett says more definitive action is to be taken this year. Uh, we have already started to be proactive. Um, we have been talking with our partners, NEPA and ourselves. Um, we've been talking with um, some international bodies that are doing studies as well on, on sargasm. So what is the expectation from these discussions this year? Mr. Bartlett says he expects an outcome that will bring a solution to the recurring issue once and for all. We think that the meeting of the minds of all of these uh, key um, and, and, and powerful thinkers will help us to find a formula that will do two things. One, will identify and choke off the flow of sargasm into our space. And second, to, um, to track it and to be able to, to trap it um, within our, our waters. And, and finally, to be able to recover from whatever fallout that may come by way of its own accretion on our beaches. We take a break here on the Midday News, but stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back. Continuing the news. The government is moving to boost the capacity of the security forces to monitor communication by criminals. The disclosure was made by National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang at a news conference yesterday where he outlined legislative measures to be taken to cauterize crime. He noted that a review of the anti-gang legislation is underway, but the government would not be relying only on that law to suppress gang activities. The anti-gang legislation will have its final, uh, two or three final sittings to look at various amendments until we get to those sittings, in fact, we are bringing to the House amendments to the Intercept Act to provide the security forces with an effective means of using modern technology to gather evidence in dealing with the criminal enterprises, the gangs, their dons, and the bringing together of guns in the country. The Interception of Communications Act allows the security forces to tap the telephones of persons suspected or accused of criminal involvement. It authorizes the interception of all communications of a specific person named in a warrant and enables author authorized officers to request technical information from telecommunications service providers under the Telecommunications Act. Councillor for the Waterford Division in St. Catherine, Fenley Douglas, is appealing to the National Works Agency, NWA, to make adjustments to the newly rehabilitated Port Henderson Road. In a recent interview with TVJ News, Mr. Douglas raised several concerns about the median being created in the road. He claims the median is too low, which encourages motorists, especially taxi operators, the to drive over Portmore, it. The people of we were hoping that the median in the center of the road would have been much higher. Because as it is right now, vehicles are driving over the median, one. Two, we're seeing taxi men who are going towards Nagohead stopping in the center of the road, letting off people who is just crossing. And three, the fact that this road is somewhat like a new highway. If there should be an accident, there's no way that the accident will be contained on the side that it occurs. The intersections at both Nagohead and Bayside cannot remain as they are. Otherwise, what they're only doing with the road widening is to shift the block from one end to the other and no arrangement made at the intersection to disperse the traffic once it's built up in, four, in two lanes. Sfenley Douglas also says the street lighting is insufficient, which he believes is a recipe for disaster. I am concerned also about the lighting. When it was a normal two-way road, the lighting would have been able to spread across the entire corridor. 
Now that it is a dual carriageway, the lighting is insufficient. The entire left side going down towards Bayside will be in total darkness. But as it is now, it's an ingredient for disaster. And if we should cry out or talk now, it is the best time to do so, so that the National Works Agency can make the necessary correction to, to, to this corridor here now. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC's liquefied natural gas LNG terminal in Portmore, St. Catherine, is to be commissioned into service shortly. That's the word from Minister of Transport Robert Montague. The JUTC has acquired five LNG buses, and Mr. Montague says more will be purchased. The depot will operate the buses as part of a pilot. LNG is being promoted as a much cleaner fuel than diesel, which offers economic and environmental benefits. Children who previously had to travel from south-central parishes of the island to Kingston seeking medical treatment for some ear conditions will no longer have to do so. That's because the Mandeville Regional Hospital is now equipped with a state-of-the-art microscope which will significantly aid in those procedures. The microscope, valued at over $3.5 million, was donated to the hospital by the Manchester Wellness Foundation. Consultant in the Ear, Nose and Throat ENT Department of the Mandeville Regional Hospital, Dr. Andrew Manning, says the use of the microscope will change the quality of life for many children in the region. This microscope is going to help a large number of children within our region to have a better life. So currently, we have to send the patients to Bustamante Children's Hospital or the University Hospital. And a lot of the times they go there and they join a long waiting list. So this microscope will help to change that. Dr. Manning noted that the handing over of the equipment is essential as a number of children across the island are affected by glue air. This refers to a buildup of fluid behind the eardrum. He says this infection has a serious dehabilitating effect on the learning process. Kids with hearing disabilities have a lesser chance of learning what they need to learn in primary school. They have a much lesser chance of going on to high school, a much lesser chance of going to college, which means a much greater chance of ending up in prison. We're going on to news in sports. Jamaica's men's and women's rugby sevens team both finished second at the Rugby Americas North Championship in the Cayman Islands on Sunday. The men's team lost to Canada in the final 40-5. Despite the defeat, the men's team qualifies for the 2020 edition of the Hong Kong Sevens. This is the fourth time in a row that Jamaica have qualified for this tournament. In addition, by virtue of finishing second, they will now head to the Intercontinental Playoff for the Olympic Games to be played in June 2020. Meanwhile, the Lady Crocs lost 19-15 to Mexico in the final. They will also head to the Intercontinental Playoffs for the Olympics next year. The men's team will next be in action in the Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru later this month. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Please join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports, and production teams, good afternoon.